Emmanuel Fadi, one of the great minds of contemporary economic thought, died prematurely at the end of July 2020. A brilliant French economist and professor at Harvard University, he died in Boston where he lived at the age of 41. He contributed in a fundamental way to the development of Keynesian macroeconomic theory, financial instability and macroprudential policies, and to the analysis of the international monetary system. As a student and co-author of Nobel laureate Jean Tirole, Emmanuel analyzed the distortions in the banking system that lead banks to assume excessive and interrelated risks. A research topic that became central with the global financial crisis in 2008 and the bank bailout policies that ensued. Motivated by the 2011 and 12 sovereign debt crisis in Europe, Emmanuel developed an analysis with Ivan Verning of MIT on macroprudential policy inside and outside of monetary unions. At the center of the analysis, they place a demand externality in the Keynesian tradition. If prices and wages are too high in Italy compared to Germany, in the absence of an exchange rate depreciation, Italy suffers a recession. Individual production and consumption choices are not socially optimal because they do not internalize that the expenditure of each individual contributes to creating demand and work for others. Fiscal transfers between countries of the union are optimal. A fiscal as well as a monetary union emerges as an optimal policy. Emmanuel's analysis preceded the policies adopted in the Eurozone crisis during the COVID uh, pandemic. With Ricardo Caballero, also of MIT, and Pierre Olivier Gurinches of Berkeley, Emmanuel contributed to the study of global imbalances with the emergence of China and the deterioration of the US balance of payments. These are important issues for US economic policy, uh, linked to the hypothesis of Ben Bernanke, the former uh, chair of the Federal Reserve, that these imbalances induce very low interest rates in the United States. Emmanuel and I met in 2012 uh, when I just finished my doctorate. We then became co-authors and colleagues. Together with the theory of the international monetary system, I have beautiful memories of our long walks absorbing conversation about which model was the right one. We were thinking about the risks of growing American debt, risks that are not immediate, in fact, until recently, they were often ignored, but we thought that they were fundamentals for the long term. It is extremely hard for me to accept that Emmanuel won't be there in the long run. Emmanuel researched what he thought was best, not necessarily what was popular at the moment. He recently started a new research agenda on foundations of aggregate production with his former student, David Bakayi, who is now at UCLA. He was excited about this new research avenue. Although he lived in Boston for many years, Emmanuel remained very deeply French and European, as anybody who has met him uh, would testify. He had studied the imperfections of the Eurozone and decided policies to improve it. French President uh, Macron um, eulogized Emmanuel, recognizing uh, his contributions to the policy agenda of the President of France. Emmanuel was a Renaissance man with many interests beyond academic research. He was interested in arts, in literature, in food. I recall one of our last conversations was a search for good books on Alessandro Farnese, who then became Pope Paul III. Emmanuel leaves behind a beloved mother and an Italian partner, Micol, who um, I know well and to whom I expressed uh, my deepest affection. I had always known that one day I would have to um, write an article or uh, provide a public speech on Emmanuel Fari's great contribution uh, in economics. I had never thought it would be an article in memoriam, and it is one of the saddest days and one of the saddest things that I get to do today uh, to shoot this video.